Today on Mid-Missouri Art News, we visit with artist Mrs. Anita Rogers, who will share what is happening in her art world. everyone to JCTV Mid-Missouri Art News, uh, supported by many enthusiasts uh, now uh, in the art world, throughout the world. Uh, it's coming to you today from the capital city of Jefferson City, Missouri. I'm your host, Rick Jay. Glad to have you with us. Well, if you will, join me in welcoming uh, first uh, artist uh, Anita Rogers of Barnett, Missouri. Uh, JCTV Mid-Missouri Art News is uh, uh, honored to have you with us today, uh, Mrs. Rogers, so, so welcome. Well, thank you. I'm really glad to be here. Uh, this is exciting. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, Anita, if I may call you by your first name. Please do. Um, uh, please tell us a little bit about what uh, makes uh, up Anita Rogers. Well, I am a mother, a grandmother, and even a great-grandmother. And uh, art has been my hobby, and uh, I've worked at it for 50 years. And uh, my mother was an artist before me, and she begged me to do it when I was younger, and I, oh, I had a lot of things in the world to do. And so then, after she died, I started painting. And where does this uh, come from? This uh, where was you reared, as they would say in Missouri? Well, I was born in Mississippi, ah. and then I moved to Lamar, Missouri, which was my mother's hometown. Oh, I see. And I graduated from there, and I went to Ozark Bible College in uh, Joplin, oh, I see. Missouri, and then I uh, moved to Eldon and uh, traveled around a little, and then settled back into Eldon, and uh, then. Uh, Married my husband, moved to Barnett, out in the country. Barnett, Missouri. Yes, and uh -huh. so now I have a little art shop in Barnett, about a mile from the house, right. so I can paint at midnight if I want to. Excellent. We're going to talk about that and give it a name here in a little bit. <laughs> okay. Uh, would you like to say hello to anyone special? Oh, uh, to my family and to friends your family and, and my friends. Uh, uh, painting friends that come and paint with me all the time right and classes and we're going to again talk about what's happening uh, in the at this uh, new location that we'll share with uh, the viewers well uh, can you share with us really from the heart what uh, how you became inspired to become an artist and a craftsperson well i think it's always been in my heart and uh it just it just seems like that uh, every day you pick up something and you think, oh, I can make something out of this, uh -huh. as my family knows. I'm a hoarder when it comes to objects that I think I can use in art. And uh, craft, I, I try to stay with my canvases, just I so see. that I, but I do like to paint on glass. Uh, yes, and we're going to show some of those as mm -hmm. uh, on the timeline as uh -huh. we're uh, uh, visiting here at the round table. Uh, now you, I noticed you sort of combine the, the um, artist concept with crafts. Now do you separate those or do you combine those? How do you look at I that? I kind of combine them, but um, uh, for a long time crafts was more important than paintings. You know, people weren't as interested in your paintings ah, as they are in the little, they can't afford them. Right. You know, and little yes. things they can, seems like. Ah. And, uh, but my heart's always in the canvas. So if you want to buy a, a large canvas, 24 by 36, you might sell a few crafts and uh, yes. work the craft tables to make. So you can buy the canvas. You can buy the canvas, yes. <laughs> I understand. Or the that. frame. <laughs> <laughs> or the frame, especially. Yes. Well, excellent. So you was inspired, basically. And we talk about, uh, with our guests, we go clear back uh, one gentleman uh, described it uh, 
going back clear to the days of the caveman. And uh, someone in that cave was inspired to draw on these cave walls. We know that for a fact. Yes. And then also his story goes on, you know, this probably, this gentleman says, well, you know, I, I love to do these things on the wall. You all go out and hunt and, and kill and uh, we'll have a meal tonight, but, and I'll just, I'll make sure I get a, a, an art, some artwork on this cave wall while you're gone and, and, and earn my, uh, my meal. <laughs> so well, I painted I on a few walls. <laughs> oh, I, so I guess it's, Sometimes we even talk about it being in our DNA. I think it, it seems is. Like, uh, so many you're sort of born with it and you're inspired. I know I share a lot that drawing on the bedroom walls at three years old or so. And, mm -hmm. and uh, the people who rented the house on the farm uh, or in, in a small town in Missouri, they, they left that draw, those drawings on the walls for years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just, I guess they must have looked fairly good at three years <laughs> old or they wouldn't have left them. <laughs> Or they didn't decide to paper. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, we uh, mm -hmm. seem like it's some part of our DNA. Or, I think or, so. Or whatever. Um, well, what are your favorite mediums and, and subject matter, in that, uh, for a matter of fact, uh, in your arts, in your crafts? So. Well, it started out in oils, mm -hmm. which will always be one of my passions. But I switched over to acrylics because for the health reason. I see. You, mm -hmm. you know, uh, acrylics are so much, uh, and they're faster to dry. Right. And you can varnish them and sell them the next day if you want to. Where an oil, you've got to wait a while. And sure. uh, uh, it, I don't know, it just seems that uh, they're, and I do like watercolors. Uh -huh. And uh, I've done just about all the mediums, but uh, uh, acrylics it just seems faster and uh, compatible to what I'm doing. Right. You know, I can paint 15 minutes and walk away, let it dry or not dry and come back. Yes. And we'll be uh, uh, letting the viewers look at some of these watercolor and acrylic and uh, bottles, and et cetera. And we'll talk about those in a little bit. Well, do you have any projects now as far as your artwork? It's in process, mm -hmm. upcoming events that you'd like to talk about in the form of you as uh, well, we're having an open house at the uh, new, new place uh -huh. on the 13th and the 14th, a Friday evening and a Saturday. And we've got some other art people that are coming, uh, craft people too. And we're just going to serve refreshments and set up and let anybody come in and enjoy it. So this is in Barnett, Missouri at yes. the junction of AA, AA and, 52. and 52 Highways. Yes. And the name is Painters at Heart. Mm-hmm. And in this uh, shop, as we're showing here on the timeline, a picture of the shop. It's a cozy little shop inside and out. And you offer so much. So give us an idea of, of what's going on at the, this time. You have a grand opening. Give us that, that, that date again. The 13th and the 14th of December. Uh -huh. And it'll be the evening of, the, of Friday and then Saturday. And uh, we, uh, at this shop, I teach painting classes. We have tea parties and paint parties, um, just get togethers. And this morning we had breakfast. We have on Wednesday morning, we're serving breakfast to the community, trying to get them to come in and get to know your neighbor. Yes, and uh -huh. I've really been enjoying it. Now what's the population of Barnett, Missouri at this time? Uh, 200, I think, 201 maybe. 201. I mean, that is just the downtown part of, I mean. That's a the census, yes, the last census, yes, uh, census. Now I, I can relate to that. The town I'm from was 199 for probably 40 years. I don't know how that <laughs> people came in, people came out, but 199. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're familiar with Barnett, Missouri, it's a small spot mm -hmm. in the road, but a lot of friendly people, a lot of um, uh, people attempting to, should we say, survive and, and bring them what they can to the community. So Barnett, Missouri, uh, not only the farmers, uh, the cattlemen, but then you have somewhat of um, no industry, I guess, exactly. Right, it's just but, outside of Eldon and for sales. It's a unique uh, place that you can drop in, like she says, has this, have this uh, coffee and breakfast and get to know people and admire the works throughout the, uh, the, the cottage is more like a cottage. It is. Uh, 
but it's painters at heart. Uh, there's parking, and so um, we invite you to drop in uh, anytime. Now, if they want to get directions, what's the best? Uh, well, if you want to, I guess what you call Google it in, it's 107 yes. Locust Street. 107 Locust Street. But it's if you go down Highway uh, 52 from Eldon going toward Versailles, you'll see it when you hit Barnett, when you have to right. slow down we to go just, through the town. And you'll see double A going uh, north, and yeah. you look to the left, and there's the... And it's uh, on the south side. Painters at heart. Or the right-hand side going toward Versailles. Right. So... Um, well, my, you know, it's, it's an honor to bring someone to, from a small community, not only from a small community, but with your years of expertise and, um, should we say, um, experience that you bring to uh, painters at heart. And so it's an honor. Sometimes we miss out on the artists on a small, it's a large scale, but uh, sometimes the geographics mm -hmm. don't align with the, the artist of the 50 years experience. So when you're going to, going to visit Painters at Heart, you, uh, you're getting more than just walls of paint. You're getting experience. As you see, Ms., uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Rogers is uh, very conversational. And so you're going to probably be able to start a conversation. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> in the time, we must take a short break because I'm excited about talking about some of these paintings. So hang loose for a few seconds. When we come back, uh, Anita shares with us her passion as a business lady and owner of Painters at Heart. Stay with us. There's a lot more here in Mid-Missouri Art News. Places, everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Welcome back to JCTV Mid Missouri Art News. I'm your host, Rick J, and I continue our discussion with Mrs. Anita Rogers of Barnett, Missouri. Well, Mrs. Rogers, you are really a busy lady uh, with a lot going on in your life, as explained in the, uh, before the break. Not only active in community affairs, I understand, but also you own and operate a business, as uh, we spoke about, uh, known as Painters at Heart in Missouri, the city of Barnett. And that's at Junction uh, AA and 52 Highways. <laughs> so please, if you would, or try to take a, an in-depth look at what's happening at Painters at Heart. Please share with the viewers, what is Painters at Heart, basically? Uh, it's a place to come and paint and uh, to learn uh, new details, new, de two uh, new techniques, and uh, we have parties where we just have fun, or you can come and really dive deeper into the techniques and stuff that you need to learn to do certain kinds of paints. I see. And uh, I like to teach one on one, and I like to teach up to 10. I see. So I don't teach as many of the big classes as I did years ago. Right. But, uh, uh, I love teaching. I love teaching other people. And to you've do been it. doing this uh, 50 years. Yes. Uh, as a great great or a great grandmother, or a grandmother, or what have you. Mm -hmm. So you still have time and make a use of those uh, senior years. <laughs> my <laughs> husband calls it a playhouse. A playhouse. Oh, I see. <laughs> I can I can uh, probably understand that uh, <laughs> that description. Well, how would you define the mission from your heart of painters at heart? Well. Uh, if you love art, you know, it, it is in your heart. And um, I named, I had a, a shop before that was Keepsake Cottage in Eldon for years. Yes. Uh -huh. But uh, when I, uh, I started calling myself Painters at Heart because we were doing craft shows and stuff. Yes. And uh -huh. then when I went to Barnett, uh, there's a little trim on top of the uh, 
house with a little metal trim, and it's probably the only one that's got the full trim in Barnett left. Oh, and it has hearts in it, and oh. I was so excited when I saw that because then I could continue with the, the thought of painters at heart. I see. It's, it's very well symbolized in those yes. yes, red roof and so, all. So your mission is basically to... To enjoy art, to love it. show others how to enjoy art. Yes. Share it with others. Mm -hmm. It's I've, an automatic mm -hmm. uh, love. Mm -hmm. uh, just showing up maybe for the class, the conversation. And, you don't and, have to be talented to paint. Exactly. I tell people that all the time uh -huh. because it's what you want to do and what you like to do. And a lot of times we're surprised at our... It's how much you can do. Yes, how much what you, you learn. Do. If you have a good instructor at anything we attempt, it seems to make a difference. And I think you see life different when you paint yes. because mm -hmm. you see light and shadows and you see things that you've never seen before. Right. And once you start painting, I think it opens your eyes to the beauty that's out there. Exactly, and it's your expression. Yes. That's what we talk about. We try to express things from the heart as we're hoping that other people will like it. If mm -hmm. not, that I'll be satisfied with it because that's, that's how I'm, I'm, I'm relating, that's uh, right. trying to relate to others, uh, or at least myself, and feel like I've accomplished a painting, whether it's stick men or <laughs> yes. the landscape of the uh, <laughs> Grand Canyon or whatever. I like so, to teach children too because, you know, uh, and they do their own thing. Oh, you okay. know, you just kind of present it to them and they go on and do, and I've learned from them. You know, you learn a little few things, you know, that you didn't even think that, about. That come naturally maybe. Yes, uh, yes. Well, they need to understand that uh, those classes are offered in many areas of arts and crafts. So. Please share with us if you can. Go down the line, if you would say, and give us uh, an idea of what classes are offered and, and who your target clientele might be. Uh, you mentioned children and, mm -hmm. and uh, other adults. You also, um, I know there's, you're in a community where you have the Mennonite uh, faith, mm -hmm. and those people seem to be very artistic. They are. And I'm wondering if you reach out to them because they're, this is right, Barnett is right in the middle of farmland. And you're thinking, what is a, a gallery or a, an art a, a, a cottage, what uh, painters uh, at heart building, what's it doing out here in the middle of the country? So if you stop and think about it, there's many people of all different talents and, and, and uh, what have you that are interested. So you do probably, uh, relate to mm -hmm. a vast majority of uh, clientele or uh, so who who is your target? Uh, well, I don't know that I, I just target to anyone that's interested, but you know, I've had Mennonites in my painting classes over the years yes. and uh, I know some of them have that are really talented yes. that don't need to come for to me, exactly. you know, mm -hmm. but they're very talented in, in their own right and uh, uh, but uh, I've taught at school when I was, I was a para to special needs for 10 years and I, the last few years I helped some of the younger uh, students learn uh, the joy of art and uh, I still continue to do some of that and uh, I like to have, uh, we have advanced painting classes we have some that are just beginning, you know, and uh, uh, a lot of it is scheduled. You know, if they want to paint, right. then we go ahead. But usually Monday morning and Saturday mornings is kind of a free open class. You just so have you to call have... and let me know you want to paint. Right. And you said call. How do they reach you to find out uh, what's going on? Do you have a mail out or a website? I uh, have a telephone number, and it's okay. uh, 573 two one six nine seven two nine and uh, uh, I'm on Facebook at least my granddaughter has me on Facebook yeah. and she tells me if anyone wants to get a hold of me and, and what's your Facebook uh, uh, contact? painters at heart painters at or heart. just uh, or Anita Rogers Anita you know Rogers. either one excellent so you're not really targeting it's open to whoever wants That's to right. give it a try and I think those that want to start out uh, should be encouraged. I think uh, Mrs. Um, Rogers is a perfect person. If you want to get started and uh, find out uh, a little bit of what 
you might have uh, stored away uh, in, within the, the brush, into the brush that you're holding. I think uh, Mrs. Rogers is going to be one to turn to. And it's in a very relaxed, small community. Um, it's just worth the drive to, uh, at different times of the year uh, just to travel to Barnett and, uh, and uh, visit with her and find out. So we'll get that uh, telephone number and uh, Facebook on the uh, timeline. Well, now, um, how would you, I guess, to travel, it's best to go 52? Yes, highway? I would think so. Uh, that's the main uh, line through. I mean, you can come through the country, but right. you probably if you really don't know the area, you and definitely want to go. Pick 52 up from Eldon, or if you're coming from the, Versailles. the west, I think from Versailles, 52, mm -hmm. excellent. Um, well, I think we should note that uh, Painters of the Heart is uh, uh, one of the most remote and uh, outside of a larger city and, and does offer that, that atmosphere. Uh, sitting in a small country home, uh, as you'll see in uh, the photos that we provide. Uh, so the hours of operation is best to probably call. It is because we, we mm -hmm. uh, try to have a regular schedule, but it doesn't seem like it works all the time. I see. So best if you want to call, if you, especially if you're traveling, you know, so to make sure first. that they're, Excellent. you know. And sometimes okay. I'm a mile away from the shop. I can run there from home if somebody calls and lets me know they want to be. So you can at about any time yes. accommodate. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm coming your way. I'd like to talk about this or that. Um, you'll most likely hop in the car or or the buggy and that's <laughs> <and> right <laughs> down or the bright red truck or everybody the knows if truck. the bright red yeah. trucks there I'm there <laughs> excellent well now let's talk about some of these paintings and these this this craft work and artwork that we're putting on the timeline mm -hmm. can you describe a, a, some of your favorite projects that we're going to be that you provided to me so okay okay well the uh i've been painting on the wine bottles or the different shape bottles uh for 15 years ah. and somebody just came and wanted me to paint something on some bottles and i thought oh i really am enjoying this and uh i took it to the craft shows and every year i sell more than i did the year before ah. and i thought this has got to die because you know crafts kind of go in cycles yes, uh -huh. and uh, so you know I've probably got 20 cases of bottles stashed here and there and everywhere uh -huh. and uh, probably got another 300 in the barn oh, I see. Uh -huh. my husband would love for me to get rid of uh -huh. but you know we you know right. just paint now them up. once you paint them as we see here I put lights in them. You put lights in them. Mm -hmm. How about a candle? Do we? Uh, do well, there's some you can put, you know, you can use the batteries, you can use the electric, uh -huh. you can put candles in them. And it they just flash on and off. Oh, yeah. And you can we do. have a scene on the front, as oh, you yes. see here on the, on the, on the, mm -hmm. by the photos. Mm -hmm. And then uh, while well, you have art on the wall, what's some of your favorite paintings that we're taking a look at? Well, used to, I uh, was basically into scenery. Uh -huh. And uh, then I've gone to animals, and uh, it's just, I kind of go in there for a long time, I was painting birds. Yes. Then I would go to cats. My, I can't paint a cat, uh, you know, like a lion, leopard, or anything, because my daughter takes every one of those. <laughs> I, I mean, it doesn't stay. I've got one leopard, Bengal, uh, I guess a Bengal tiger in my family room. And they're all fighting over that one right now. Uh -huh. But I said, no, it matches my furniture. I'm keeping it. Uh -huh. But then uh, I've done a few portraits. And uh, uh, right now I'm doing a uh, lady on a horse for a certain person. I see. So you do con take commission? Oh, yes, also. I do a lot we of commission. That. And I, uh, a lady brought two photos from her vacation of sceneries. And I've already painted them up for her and really enjoyed it, even asked her if I could teach them, you know, because exactly. they were real right. interesting. And uh, so I like new new adventures. Yes. You uh -huh. know, something new comes up, then I've got to try it. Try a new flavor. Yes. Oh, I see horses. And if you see five or six different paintings that look the same, or, but different mm -hmm. colors and stuff, you know I've taught it. Yes. If it's I on see. the wall and, you know, oh. and I may have sold a few of them, but uh, you can almost tell 
that, that it was a uh, class that, if there's like, like three or four of them. Instructive uh, painting that you yes. use for instruction. I see angels. Mm -hmm. I see horses. Uh, people riding horses. Yes. The animals. I see some almost cartoon looking figurative uh, um, things. I don't know what you call them. Yeah, here. animals, dog, you know, anything that just hits a, oh, I don't know. I get, I do get tired of just doing the same thing over and over again. Right. Well, do you have a favorite then? And get, tell well, us the story of your favorite. Mine is florals, florals. but florals do not sell. <laughs> I see. And I can't get it. A lot of the uh, students don't want to paint florals for some reason. Right. It must be in the dumps right now. You know what I mean? Yes. And in a few mm -hmm. years, it'll be back up. Right. But I love to do roses. Oh. I love to paint Excellent. roses Excellent. and irises and, and um, that type of thing. Well, but I, I don't paint as many as I used to because everybody uh, just not, not interested. interested. Well... I guess global warming will take care of that. Well, there's guess. no more flowers. You'll be there with a the paintbrush. Yes. <laughs> now, the, uh, the most popular flower, I think, is an iris. Yes, I love iris. Yes, uh, and I think it's, it's, if you want to sell one, an iris would be the iris. one you want to paint. Oh, excellent. So. Well, thank you. Anita, uh, we're just about out of time. So, uh, so on behalf of JCTV Access, uh, Mid-Missouri Art News, I want to thank you for being my guest today. Uh, make it a learning experience, an informational experience for all. We've been uh, looking at this for uh, this visit at the round table for the last uh, about eight, nine months. So yes. it, finally it's come about. So I want to thank you so much. And I want to remind people um, that, that as an artist, you finally reach your certain goals or certain levels. Uh, I wanted to uh, share with you that I've been recently invited to uh, Tuscany, Italy uh, for a 10-day uh, visit where I paint a painting and it goes up for sale with many other artists from all over the world that they uh, invite to this 16th century uh, cottage-like uh, and now made into a restaurant and gallery. So I'm looking uh, hopefully to a, a visit for 10 days in Tuscany, Italy uh, to display some of my artwork and then paint a painting uh, hopefully within that 10 days. So opportunities do open, but you have a great opportunity to go visit uh, Mrs. Uh, Rogers in Barnett, Missouri. So again, thank you so much. Thank for, you. Uh, okay. Um, I want to thank JCTV, producer Gloria and Lo and the crew, uh, and thank you, our viewers, for watching worldwide. Thanks to you, too. I'm Rick Jay saying, look for more Mid-Missouri Art News right here, JCTV. See you next time. Mm -hmm.